Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back with the 25th episode in the series of treasures from the cave trying to learn some of the countless lessons and benefits that Allah the Almighty deposited in the blessed surah of surah al-kahf chapter number 18 of the Quran now the following ayat from ayah number 79 of surah al-kahf it will tell us what is the explanation of these mysterious acts of Al Khadr, peace be upon him? He said in the first ayah, As far as for the ship, you remember the ship when I hold it, when I plucked one of its boards and I damaged it? It belonged to Masakin. It belonged to some orphans and they used to hire it. Some poor people, they were partners in this ship and there used to be a king. So there was a king. Whenever he likes a ship, he finds out that the ship is looking nice, he will capture it. He will take it for himself. So he said, Asafina kanat limasakina ya'maluna fil bahar. He belonged to poor people working in the sea. Fa'aradtu an a'ibaha. And please circle the word aradtu. Fa'aradtu in ayah number 79. So I wanted to damage it. I wanted to make a deficiency in it. Why? So that whenever the king who captures the ships that he likes, that whenever he would see the ship, he will find it defected. So he would show no interest in it. And he would leave it to the poor people. He would not take it. Really? So you damaged the ship in order to spare it for its people. You've done them a favor. Perhaps they didn't know that. They didn't know that there is a king who's waiting on the other side, that if he would find the ship, he would have taken the whole thing. And those people are very poor. Masakin. Subhanallah, the fuqaha, the scholars of May Allah have mercy on him for innocence, says that there is a difference between faqir and miskin. You know that in ayah number 60 of Surah At-Tawbah, chapter number 9, Allah the Almighty listed eight categories of those who are eligible for the zakah. He said, إِنَّنَا لِلْفُقَرَاءِ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ That's the first and the second categories. You give the zakah, the mandatory charity, sadaqat, to al-fuqara and to al-masakeen. What is the difference between both? And Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on him, says that there is a difference. Al-fuqara are poorer than al-masakeen. And how did you know? He said, look, in this ayah, Allah the Almighty says that as-safina belong to masakeen. So, miskeen, a person who has some fun. Maybe you have some business. They were partners in a ship. So they are business people, but not enough for them to suffice them for a whole year or for six months for innocence. They were still in need, living hand to mouth. But Al-Faqir, his condition is much worse than Al-Miskin. So why did Al-Khadr make the hole in the ship in order to spare it? 
Also, the scholars of Islamic jurisprudence concluded from that that the faqih should choose a khafad dararain. If there are two harms, the person have the choice between them. Is a lesser in its harm. Similarly, two harams, as Allah the Almighty said, when He has forbidden us eating the dead, the swine flesh, and so on. إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةَ وَالدَّمَّ وَلَحْمَ الْخِنْزِيرِ وَمَا أُهِلَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ بِهِ But what if a person is dying, is starving to death, and there is no food but a dead meat, a meat of a dead animal, or there is no food but the swine flesh, eat it. Eat it in order to survive. It becomes permissible. Some of the scholars said it becomes mandatory if it is a matter of life or death to spare your life. Provided you're not eating this because you desire it. Provided that you eat with a limit in order to survive. You don't enjoy what you're doing of the haram. Choosing the lesser harm. This is an Islamic principle which is known as a khafu ad-dararayn. Okay? That was very interesting. How could I know that on my own? You wouldn't. Why? Because Allah the Almighty inspired Al-Khadr, peace be upon him, to do so. And he inspired him. Or he have taught him in a way or another. As he said, Initially, when Musa السلام, said that, when he answered the question to the Israeli and he said that, I am the most knowledgeable person. He said, no, in fact, there is one who is more knowledgeable than you, that we've given him mercy from ourselves, and we taught him knowledge from us. So this knowledge, this wisdom that Al-Khadr had was an inspiration from Allah, the Almighty. That is different than the revelation to the messengers. Okay. So we see. And I'm going to mention the three incidents, then I'm going to comment on all of them afterward, that how sometimes that we perceive things as evil, but Allah the Almighty knows best that they are good for you. Perhaps you dislike something while it is good for you. Subhanallah. Imagine if the owners of the ship have seen this man whom they have honored, and they allowed him to come on board and they give him a ride for free. They do not charge them any fare. Imagine if they have seen him making a hole in the ship, damaging the ship. They would have thrown him in the water, in the ocean. But because they don't know. Allah the Almighty does to us wonders. We look at things in a mysterious way. But Allah the Almighty is most wise. So, the second incident, it was about Al-Ghulam, the young boy, and nafs al whom Al-Khadr killed, like piece of cake. Musa said, أَقَتَلْتَ نَفْسًا زَكِيَّةً بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ لَقَدِ جِئْتَ It something very terrible. What is the explanation of that? How could you explain to me that killing an innocent child has a reason? Yes, it had a reason. And only Al-Khadr knew this reason because Allah the Almighty inspired him to do so. He said, وَأَمَّا الْغُلَامُ فَكَانَ أَبَوَاهُ مُؤْمِنَيْنِ فَخَشِيْنَا أَيْ فَأَرَدْنَا أَنْ يُبْدِلَهُمَا رَبُّهُمَا خَيْرًا مِنْهُ زَكَاةً وَأَقْرَبَ رُحْمًا Al-Khadr explained why he had killed the innocent boy. He said, as far as for the boy, his parents were believers, but they loved their son so much. This very nice looking handsome boy. And Allah the Almighty knew in the knowledge of the unseen that this boy, as he grows older, he will turn to disbelieve. And he may try his parents. 
and he may ruin them and he may cause them also to disbelieve in Allah so the whole family will be ruined and yurhiqahuma tughyanan wa kufra we fear he would overwhelm them with oppression and disbelief فأرادنا. with someone who is better in purity and better as far as upholding the ties of kinship that's why you kill them can anyone kill anyone and say uh, well I thought this person would be evil in the future wait a minute this is not for everyone they have not been inspired by Allah and how do you know that I have not been inspired because we legislation no one can say that God told me every once in a while brothers and sisters we hear some very odd instructions from a scholar from this country or from this country says that I have seen Prophet Muhammad in a dream or Allah have come to me in a dream and said that the Muslim Ummah is doing bad and it is going really terrible and the only way for them to come back on the straight path is by is one of the chapters of the Quran but where did you bring the thousand times from dismissed there is no more revelation after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam passed away there is no further legislation by the death of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in surah al-ma'idah Allah the Almighty said al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa today and that ayah was revealed on the farewell hajj today I have completed your religion for you akmaltu lakum deenakum completed your religion for you atmamtu alaykum ni'mati perfected my favor to you wa radiyatu lakum al islam madina and I'm pleased with Islam as a religion for you to be continued inshallah after Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Now, in the sound hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا يقضي الله لمؤمن قضاء إلا كان خير الله. Whatever Allah decides for a believer, it is good for him. Whether you know a reason or you don't, for sure this is better for you. Allah the Almighty says in the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It may be that you dislike something while it is good for you. It happens a lot. You dislike something while later on you realize, subhanAllah, it was the best choice for me. That's why it is prescribed to pray istikhara namaz in order to consult Allah before making any serious decision with the in surah al-taghabun allah the almighty says ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum ma'aduwa lakum fahzaruhum wa in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa taghfiru fa inna allaha ghafoorun rahim oh you who believe inna min azwajikum some of your spouses and some of your sons are enemies to you. It happens. It happens. Who knows? Allah the Almighty knows. If your son is hindering you from the path of Allah, then he has become an enemy to you because he wants to drag you down, keep you in hell. If your wife is hindering you from the path of Allah, then she is an enemy to you. So Allah the Almighty knows best, and that's why He inspired Al Khadr to take the life of this. His parents would be saved. Why? Because those who die under the age of puberty for believing parents will be saved. And as far as for the parents, there is a very interesting hadith narrated by Abu Musa al Ash'ari. May Allah be pleased with him. 
in which he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ وَلَدُ الْعَبْدِ Whenever the servant's son dies, if any of us lose angels, قَبَضْتُمْ وَلَدَ عَبْدِ يَقُولُونَ نَعْمْ Did he take the soul of my servant's son? They say, yes, we did. Then he would say, قَبَضْتُمْ ثَمَرَةَ فُؤَادِهِ The fruit of his heart. Have you taken the fruit of his heart? Imagine your son, especially if it is the only son. They said, yes, we did. They fulfilled the command of Allah. Allah the Almighty then will ask, فَمَاذَا قَالَ عَبْدِ And what did my He said, Alhamdulillah, وَاسْتَرْجَعْ يعني He said, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ We all belong to Allah and unto Him we shall return. To Allah the Almighty will say to the angels, إِبْنُوا لِعَبْدِي بَيْتًا فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَسَمُّوهُ بَيْتَ الْحَمْدِ Build a house for my servant in paradise and name it the house of the praise. Because he thanked Allah, he praised him. So the son will be saved, will be a faratun ila al-jannah. He will be ahead of him in paradise. And meanwhile, the parents automatically will be saved provided they endure the death of their son or their child patiently. So when this happens, one should not waste this opportunity. One should be very intelligent to take advantage of a calendar. in paradise. Then in ayah number 82, there comes the explanation of the third lesson, the third mysterious act, the village, the town, the very stingy people who did not offer any food or any provision to Musa and Al-Khadr, and they furthermore refused to provide them with anything despite the fact that they were starving. And now Al-Khadr reconstructed the wall and built it for them. So Ajara. If you wish, you could have charged them for that. You could have collected a payment for that. So, Al Khadr, peace be upon him, said, Wa Ammal فأراد ربك أن يبلغ أشدهما ويستخرجا كنبك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تصطع عليه صبرا All of that was one ayah, ayah number 82 which wraps up the story of Musa and Al-Khadr peace be upon them. He said, with regards to the wall, which I repaired, and you blame me for it because I didn't charge them for it. He said, this wall belonged to Ulamaini, the age of puberty, Yatimaini, and they were orphans, which for certain they were under the age of puberty, because the Prophet says, لا يتم بعد البلور. After the person reaches the age of puberty, he's not a yatim anymore. Some people, they say, I'm a yatim, and he's already grown up. Yes, even if your parents were born, it is taken away from you. No more yatim after reaching the age of puberty. So they were two young boys, two orphans, two young وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا And their parents have hidden, uh, they were hiding a treasure for them under this wall, beneath the wall. وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا uh, Their father here was not the immediate father. He was their seventh grandfather, was a righteous man. Because of the righteousness of the great-grandfather, Allah the Almighty protects the offspring. So when the person is righteous, that will benefit himself and benefit his family member and benefits his offspring. As if the wall fell apart, 
if the wall collapsed and the treasure was exposed, they would have captured the whole thing and they would not have given the orphans a thing of it. That's why I had to repair it because we have seen the nature of the people of this town. Then he said, Rahmatan min Rabbi. This is a mercy from your Lord. Allah in Islam. great great grandfather was righteous so that in order to keep the treasure for them until they grow up and they find out about it all of that is a means of mercy from your Lord then he said وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي whatever I did I did not do it because I wanted to do it on my own rather Then he said, Remember we said we need to uh, put a circle and highlight certain words. Yes. Initially, when Al-Khadr said to Musa السلام, I shall inform you Then after he explained the whole thing, he said, He's missing one letter, which is the ta. Ta seen now ta ain. What happened to the ta? In the Arabic grammar and the Arabic eloquence, they say that. When the structure of the word is bigger, that indicates the meaning is bigger and greater. What does it mean? Initially, when Musa السلام, was puzzled and he perceived these acts as mysterious, he could not endure it. That's why he said, It seemed to him like this is very puzzling, very hard to understand. But after become easy and affordable oh that's why you did that that's why he removed the letter ta reduced the structure of the word to indicate that now it has become very easy to endure because you understand and he used the word he attributed making a damage in the ship to himself فأردت. to the mercy of your Lord he said رَحْمَةً مَنْ رَبِّكْ a mercy from your Lord not from me and he said so that they would reach the age of puberty and they will find out about their property so Allah the Almighty is the one who would allow them to live to prosper to find out about the treasure not me. This linguistic, very interesting, you know, observations in the Quran would require perfectly, or somebody had to walk him through. And by the grace of Allah, I tried my best. And hopefully now, whenever you are reciting the story of Musa and Al Khadr, you pay attention to these very interesting observations, which we say, please highlight this word and compare it to another word. In another ayah. By that, brothers and sisters, alhamdulillah, we read of the story of Musa and Al Khadr, peace be upon them. And uh, leave you all in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.